Why do you have such a problem with penguins? I just think they're overrated animals. They're like dolphins to me. Do you have any artistic talent? No. What areas of life do you feel like you just have no talent in? Probably anything to do with art. I feel like I have no talent artistically. I can't repair or fix anything or build anything. I mean, am I good at cooking? Probably not. But I like to do it. So, I mean, do I have talent? No. I can't cook. But I don't have a sense of smell, so I have a really good reason for me not to be able to cook because I don't care about it. <laughs> like, nobody would ever look at me and be like, Who's, who should cook this? Well, have him do it. <laughs> like, no, I shouldn't be the one doing that. What uh, are you? Are you afraid to cook? I have never cooked for anyone else. Except your wife. No, not even my wife. I have never, like, cooked for my wife. I've browned meat or something like that, but I don't have a sense of smell. So, like, why would I cook for somebody? Why well, would be like, well, who should do it, right? Like, we need somebody to look something up. Well, you wouldn't have the blind guy do it, right? Like, well, that's not the ideal choice. I feel like that's going to a completely, like, you know, far left or right uh, example there, but it's but an I guess accurate it makes example, sense. right? It's also losing a sense that is crucial to that thing. I, I honestly feel though that if this if the roles were were reversed and I had just admitted to you that I had never cooked a meal for Melissa, you would be dragging me through the mud if I had a smell or not. No, because I like to me though that doesn't make it like I don't see why that's a big deal. I mean, it's I think it's more the thought. It's more of taking the time and effort to try and you know do something for the other person, whether it's good or not. Uh, I, I just I'm more I'm more uh, amazed at the fact that you've never cooked a meal for her. How did you get away with that? Why? Because I don't have a sense of smell. Why would it? Like, what, do you want me to make something for you that's not going to taste good? No. I mean, I'd still okay t- then. Like, that's a pretty easy th- situation to solve. I'd still take it. I I you know if you came to me and you're like to me that's just a waste of time. I don't understand that at all. But I want the- you to do something poorly for me. But here's the thing: maybe you're actually an outstanding cook. But you've never tried it. I'm not. I've made meals for my children. They're not any good. <laughs> that doesn't count. Kill. Why doesn't it count? It's the same basic principle. If you, I don't understand why you would want someone to do something for you if you know that they're not good at it. I understand what you're saying. I don't think you've given it a fair chance. That's all I'm saying. You want grilled cheese? I'll make grilled cheese. I've made my wife grilled cheese. I'm not going to sit there and try to make her like pasta vazool. Uh, got some... Bangers for you. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, this one's a weird one, and I'm not really sure. Most of these came to me while I was sitting thinking after a couple of pops over the weekend. So I don't know how these are going to turn out, but. Uh, <laughs> are they legible? Uh, like, did you write them down? Uh, and I, I wrote them down on my phone, but the words are, were so misjumbled. But I, I think I got it. Why didn't you just use voice to text? I mean. You've been inebriated. Do you think uh, uh, things through? Because I don't. No, not really, but I still use voice to text. If you use voice to text, do you hold the phone out in front of you or to the side of you? Oof. Um, probably out in front. I don't, I don't use, I don't utilize that very often. Oh, I've become too lazy to even like type out text messages. I want voice to text the whole way. You want the Blackberry back is what you want. I loved my BlackBerry. It was a great phone. Still the best phone I ever had. So easy. All right. Uh, let's see. So this one, I believe this is what it was. Uh, would you rather be a kid your entire life or an adult your t- entire life? How old is a kid? I need to know specifics, right? There's a big difference between being a five-year-old. I don't want to be a five-year-old all my life. I could uh, be maybe an 18-year-old all my life. No, That'd I'm going to a- say 12 or 43 God dang, that's like a hard age range, too. Well, 43, <laughs> man. I mean, ultimately, you want to be able to, like, experience life and do all kinds of stuff. You don't want to go through life as a 12-year-old. That's not – because you won't be able to do a whole bunch of stuff, right? You couldn't explain to people that, no, I'm, I'm actually 47. I just look like a 12-year-old. So I'd rather be 43, especially if you were going to be, like, a mortal. Well, not a mortal, yeah. but your whole life at 43? That's a pretty good deal. That's Well, no, this is an easy answer. Okay. I think right. I would much rather – Anything under 70, I would rather spend my whole life under un, under that. 
I'd rather spend my life as an adult. You can do all the adult things. <laughs> I don't know. There, I think there's a sense of uh, honesty of being 12 your entire life. You can just have fun. No, res- no real responsibility. You could eat and drink all the crap you wanted. Yeah, but you're going to be like looking like a 12-year-old when you've been alive for like 50 years, man. You're going to be pretty yeah. tired of playing at the playground. I mean, listen, Benjamin Button, calm down over there. You look like you're yeah, 12. I'm, I'm just saying, well, that's a compliment. I'll take that. You know, that that leads me to something else here, all right? Okay, I here was we go, here we go. Here I we was go. age profiled over the weekend, and I'm a little mm-hmm. upset about it. I'm at a grocery store checking out, and I had a bottle of tequila. <laughs> That I was buying. And the the woman comes over. She wasn't going to check my ID. She looks at me and she goes, you don't have any gray hair, so I'm going to need to see your ID. Okay. Sounds like she was doing her job. I look 40. I, I, I clearly do not look 21 and under. But because I don't have any gray hair, so my question is, I don't know if that's a compliment or if I if I look so young that like it's it's just not attractive anymore. I don't know. I don't know. Well, it's probably an insult if you're under 25, but if you're like 40 and somebody's checking your idea, that's a compliment. Okay. All right. Yeah, it's an insult if you're that age, but like if I you're kinda, like 22 and somebody's like you look like a 16-year-old, then you're like, "Oh." Cool. Like I I kind of got a half annoyed for like a quick second. Because I'm like, I have some gray hair. Uh, gray hair some gray hair. Well, I, <laughs> I just that's combined. Actually, wow, that's gray That's a good way to do it. I don't mind it, actually. Um, you. So clearly, I she wasn't looking at my hair. She just wanted to find an excuse to card me, which is fine. I don't mind. Like, I'm all for it. But, you know, don't, don't come at me, is what I'm saying. Why do you let these minor inconveniences affect your life? Cause I think like, why did you? Why do you let this affect your life? This would not affect me for any second, right? If somebody carded me and was like, "Hey, I need to see your ID for a second. One second after they hand it back to me, I've already forgotten about it. Like, you can't dwell on these things, man. Okay, here you got to move on with your life. When at what age do you start to get annoyed when you get when you get carded? Never, because it's just somebody doing their job. It's like I would if I was ninety seven and somebody was like, "Hey, we need to see your ID." I'm like, okay, cool. Here it is. Like, what's the big deal? Do you it's know why you never get of your life? Do you know why you never get carded? Is because you buy the shittiest beer, and they know someone who's super old is buying that beer. Maybe because I don't really stress out about little situations, so that keeps me looking younger, and then I get carded over things. I didn't say right? that I was stressed out. I was just, I was just like, hmm, like. You were already punching in, you know, the okay, and then you look at me, and then now you want my ID. Well, they probably remember that they have to scan it for, like, store policy, and they just thought of something to say to you so that they didn't have to hear you get all pissed off about it. Also, so here's like, a... I could just say that this is store policy, I didn't need to card you, or they could be like, oh, you look young, and then you'll be like, oh, 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 oh I guess I do, and then hand it to what? them, right? They're just what? suckering you in, man. They're just Why didn't you just make me sound like Santa Claus for a second? Mm, oh, oh, oh. well you're probably like oh, oh, oh i do look young today right like you're a gabber I, you know I, you're I, a gabber i did know. actually I, I did like i did i did turn around and i was like i'll be carded anytime oh <laughs> that's a great thing and uh god yeah see right they suckered you right in you played right into their hand now they got your id all your information they probably opened a bank account in your name and pretty soon you're going to be living on the street all because of this one interaction but I did get the tequila, and it made for a fantastic evening. I can't drink tequila, man, anymore. I just, even the word is like... I, I had to get something, uh, and, and it was a, a, a wrestling pay-per-view night. Oh, boy. So, you know, it was it was a good night Saturday. Last, See, uh, last That Saturday. means whacking off in the base. I, <laughs> I, like, I don't know where you're going with that one. Um, just like I have no idea where I was going with this one. Uh, but are you, you going to get upset about getting carded and then go home and buy a wrestling pay-per-view? Like, I'm an adult. Time to get this wrestling pay-per-view. Hey, just so you know, uh, wrestling is a global thing. It's just not, you know, a lot of, lot of us out there. So be careful. I'm Hey, man, your thing. We've your had deal. a professional wrestler on the podcast. Isn't he good now? He got, I thought he was doing really well. He was. He, he He's oh, still man. around. Uh, <laughs> he was. <laughs> okay. Uh, anyways, uh, would you rather wrestle 
An alligator or a gorilla? Probably a gator, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay. Because they don't have hands, right? Like, I could yeah. probably do better against a alligator because I could just get on top of it. Like, if I just what's held that? on, what's it going to do? A, ga- a gorilla has arms and hands. It's going to tear you apart. But see, I feel like if the gator gets you, you have a less chance of g- g- doing anything than if a gorilla is in the same position. Like, I feel oh, like... I- I feel like a gator's going to wrap you up and drown you. That's where at least, a, a, you know, a girl is probably going to smash your face in. But at least for a half second, you you may have a better chance of trying to escape. I don't. Yeah, but I think that the gator has less of a chance of getting you. Maybe you have a point in that regard. I think it's completely over if either one of them gets a hold of you. But I think you have a better chance of, like, evading the gator for longer. The gorilla is just going to absolutely wreck you. Oh, man, it's... Yeah, like I said, I don't know where any of these uh, have have come from, uh, but good ideas come in the middle of just thinking. About oh yeah, things. it's amazing if you just stop and let your brain run for a couple of seconds. Like how many thoughts are just ping ponging around up oh, there? Oh man, you don't know what's gonna happen. Which we never do, right? Like we just never, we never do. I do every Friday and Saturday night. When I... <laughs> Take a bunch of edibles and, and, and just stare into the night and think about thoughts. Engage into those activities. Uh, yeah. All right, last uh, last one here. Um, it's more of a question than a than a banger. But uh, what kind of Christmas tree do you have? You go cut one down. Do you have a fake one? I have a fake one, right? Fake trees and titties are my favorite things. <laughs> <laughs> Why get the real one when the original, when the fake ones can be superior, right? <laughs> that's so much less. That's so much easier. I don't have to go pick it out. I don't have to worry about is this going to be a good one. I don't have to worry about how much it's going to cost, getting rid of it. Just go get the fake tree and be done with it. And if you want the scent, then buy a candle. I'm sure you've got many recommendations of candles that smell like trees. I, I mean, we can start if you want. There's even a pine tree one. Can you just give us a one and not go down the road of 50 <laughs> candle reclamations? Just give us a good no. tree-scented candle. Uh, good tree-scented candle. Well, first one that comes to my mind, it's um, – uh, uh, I have to look up the name. Pine Star? I think it's called Pine Star by Yankee Candle. Uh, it's just it's just amazing. I don't know. It just smells like pure pine. However – if you have a fake tree, I, I, I'm going to recommend – they actually sell, like, things that you can put in the tree that will give it an aroma of being and smelling like an actual tree. Mm, okay. But do you, go, do you go buy a real tree every year? I carry that damn thing home. <laughs> I used to, um, and then the pandemic happened and we bought a fake tree. And that's one of the good things that actually came out of the pandemic for me is I learned how – much of an idiot I was for ever wanting a real tree. Yeah, I mean, a fake tree is way easier. I could care less about a real tree. Like, is it real? Is it fake? It's a tree either way. <laughs> Don't yeah, care at I mean, all. I mean, you know, I, I get it. Like, it's all part of the uh, of the shtick. But, you know, there's no needles that drop. It's easy to take up. It's easy to put down. It's, yeah, it's just, it's just easier. I think it's cheaper, too. I think you'd much rather have a fake tree. Because you're going to make fun of me for this, but when we did do it, we used to go to a tree farm and cut down the tree. So there was, if anything, there was multiple other men like my and women, like like myself and, and others, who would physically cut trees down. And by the time you're done cutting a tree down, I didn't give a shit how big it was. So let's just get it in the wagon to get it back to the car. I can't actually imagine you cutting down a tree. Did you use an axe or a saw? uh a saw it's actually a hand saw at that it's actually it's not bad um you always have that one that one uh you know over uh overzealous person who brings a chainsaw mm, you don't really need a chainsaw to cut down to cut no one inch tree no. but anyway you should have used an axe the only appropriate way to cut down a tree is with an axe because that's how a man does it i don't care what else you're doing it should be done with an axe with and and quite frankly, the forearms need to be shown. <laughs> okay. That would be my rule. If I was ever like running a lumberjack place or a tree place, they all, ev- look, everybody cuts down the tree with an axe, and you've got to roll up your sleeves because if you don't, you're not doing it correctly. 
All of your lumberjacks would have their forearms showing while sweating. You got to have your forearms showing. If you don't have forearms showing and you're using it, not using an axe, you're not cutting down a tree. It's not the right way to do it. Don't know what kind of business you're going to be running there, but uh, sounds like you're going to have a lot of applicants. So good luck. Clearly, good luck you've there. never seen the brawny man. I, <laughs> yes, I think so. Yeah, I have. Terrible reference, but yes, I have. Uh, who do you think would win in a fight between Miss? Who do you think would win in a fight between the brawny guy and Mister Clean? Like, which one of those guys do you think can handle his business better? Well, I mean, I remember Mr. Clean smiling a lot. So on basis of that alone, he seems way too happy. So I'm going to go with Mr. Braun. You don't think that he has, like, he does? he's not aggressive enough. You think Mr. Clean is too much of a nice guy? Yeah, he reminds me of a, a former co-worker of ours. <laughs> oh, yeah, he does, actually, now that I think about it. <laughs> I think Mr. Clean would actually win. I think the brawny guy puts on a good show, but I think Mr. Clean is the guy who can get down to business when he needs to. I mean, did they? Was there ever a celebrity death match that that pitted them against each other? There has to be someone that did this. There has to be. I still think Mr. Clean would win. I think he can take out the brawny guy. Uh, okay. Do you have any other uh, bangers? Any other no, thoughts? No, no. That's that's it. We learned enough about you from this episode. Okay. Uh, so our top five is top five winter animals. What's your number five? So my number five, I'm getting, I don't even want to put them on the list because I detest these animals, but they have to be, if you're talking about winter-esque animals, they have to be on the list, and that's penguins. Oh, penguins should be much higher on there. I Penguins I, are a fantastic winter animal. I agree, but I, I, I don't like them for whatever reason, and uh, they're lucky to get on my top five. Why do you have such a problem with penguins? I just think they're overrated animals. They're like dolphins to me. Like, they're just overrated animals that have been propelled to the top of the animal food chain by us humans. And I, I just, you know, I just don't get it. They're cute and they walk funny. I agree with you about dolphins, though. I don't trust those. I don't trust dolphins. I mean, super obese people waddle. And we don't put them in a zoo and laugh at them. Well, they, do they have suits on? Do they look like they have a tuxedo on? <laughs> then maybe we would. Do they eat raw fish and make weird noises? My number five is the walrus. I don't think that walruses get enough credit as an animal. They're kind of sweet. They're huge, man. They are gigantic. I think that's what people don't get. They're like a thousand pound animals. Like they are large creatures. The problem is, is that I think that people get seals, sea lions, and walruses all kind of mixed up slightly. And you think that the walrus isn't that much bigger. And then you see a walrus and you're like, holy crap. That's funny you mentioned that. That's my number four is a seal. Oh, I don't know. How is that a winter animal? My <laughs> only my only basis for putting them as a winter animal is because they're you know every time you see a documentary about you know the the North Pole or the South Pole or somewhere where it's cold and they always show orcas feeding, and the cold waters are always going after seals. So. I would never consider a seal to be a winter animal, man. I they very consider well it to be the exact opposite. To be honest, could not with be. You. But uh, that's my perception of them. My number four is a reindeer. See, I left off reindeer once again. I feel like they're friggin' overrated, man. Overrated animals. If you had a bunch of like deer-like animals lined up, like an elk, a moose, a deer, and a reindeer. Could you actually pick them out and be like, nope, that's a reindeer, not an elk? Uh, the moose, I think I could, only because, by the way, I feel like I'm going to get hammered on social media for the seal number four. Uh, and I, I've been pretty impressed with the amount of people commenting. Uh, so bring it, I guess. Uh, but regardless, uh, I'm saying that to say this, I believe moose are way bigger than both of those uh, species. That's yes. how I think you'd be able to know the difference. I couldn't tell the difference between a reindeer and a caribou. I don't know if they're actually even a different thing. I don't know if I could tell the difference between a rainbow, a caribou, and an elk. But I could tell the difference between a deer. And a moose is gigantic. I've seen a moose in, like, real life. Yeah. And it's like, whoa. Just, you better get the hell away from that thing. <laughs> that thing's pissed. They're mean animals. They're very mean animals. They'll follow you, man. Don't mess with a moose. Don't, People don't. are worried about bears, but you should really be worried about moose. Uh, all right. Well, my number three, 
Uh, <laughs> I don't even know how to transition from that properly. Uh, I have an Orca as my number three. I don't know really what your classification of winter animals <laughs> is, to be honest with you. I think that you just thought of places, animals that live in cold places and were like, I guess that counts. Just go with it, man, because I'm going to get butchered on this. But okay. I, I, I don't know. For all I, I mean, I know that, you know, orcas, they, they're like a Pacific Northwest animal. And they go into the Atlantic Ocean down near uh, Antarctica. They're in cold water, which all water is cold. You know, Antarctica is south, right? Like, yeah, what I say north? I meant I meant that they go south. Sorry. Um, yeah, that's towards Antarctica, but the yeah. Arctic. I still get confused. Let's just yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> my number three is a real winter animal, a snow owl. <laughs> Not only do I think a snow animal is a sweet winter animal, but I think it's probably the. It's probably one of my. It's my favorite owl. Easily. Once, a, once again, uh, owls are overrated. I don't have a problem with owls. I mean, I, God, you think? What do you think is more sick of hearing people make noises at it? A owl or a wolf? Oof, that's actually a great question. Uh, I feel like owls don't give a shit. I don't know why, but when you look at an owl, they just look like they don't give a shit what you're thinking. Yeah, they seem like they're probably smarter and that they don't really care too much. If they're like, oh, these idiots. But a wolf seems like they probably get a little bit annoyed. I've been to places where they're like a zoo with a wolf, and they specifically put like, don't howl at the wolves. All right. My number two is uh, a moose. Okay. Okay. Moose is respectable. I don't know. Again, I'm not sure what qualifies as a winter animal, but <laughs> that's that's fine. <laughs> Whatever. I think you just picked animals. Like, what is it, big and lives north? <laughs> yeah. Like, pick it. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, why not? I mean, all it's really none of this really makes any sense if you think about it. It's not like all these animals are, aren't are alive during the summer. I mean, it's just kind of <laughs> like we just decided, like, that's a winter animal. I, uh, yeah. My number two is a penguin, specifically an emperor penguin. Nah. I think of that as a winter animal. Yeah, I mean, like overrated. I, I don't know how. I mean, the only the, the only good penguin was Danny DeVito. <laughs> he was a good penguin, right? Like he was yeah. born to play that. It's like who's going to be the penguin? Like, well, Danny DeVito. <laughs> and everybody, they, as soon as that role was announced, that he just was like, "Well, I'm going to be that." Guess I'm winning my Oscar perfect. now. Did he win an Oscar for it? No, God, no, man, terrible. Oh, because he didn't deserve it. I don't think not enough credit goes to actors who played like roles that we like. Uh, I think we have the same number one. Though, you ha- right? you have to. There really is only one dominant winter animal, and that is the polar bear. Polar bear. I 100% agree that the polar bear is the dominant winter animal because not only do I think of it and associate it with winter, but I also think of it as like the North Pole, those Coca-Cola commercials. It's the dominant winter animal. And, uh, you know, it's gigantic. It has snow that or uh, fur that reflects what it lives in, the snow. I mean, come on, man. It's... What what color is a polar bear's fur? This is a trick question. Uh, my first initial uh, reaction is to say white or gray, but I'm guessing it's going to be like brown or something. A polar bear's skin is actually black, and the polar bear's fur is also translucent. Hmm. Wow. So it has clear fur. Oh, it does look black. That's kind of crazy. <laughs> Everyone listening to this the air, is, is now Googling what a polar bear looks like. The hair of a polar bear appears white because air spaces in each hair scatter light of all colors. And it is mostly around the color white, so that's why it appears to be white. But the pair is actually translucent, which is crazy to think about. Uh, okay, what's your honorable mention? You have any honorable mention? Any uh, other animals? So I have an Arctic hare bunny. Okay, okay, okay. An Arctic fox. Okay, and the other animals with the word Arctic in front of it. <laughs> she just decided. I was actually just trying to think of of, of one, but uh, I, I can't think I of another one either. Yeah, I don't think I can think of another one. Arctic owl? An Arctic owl, yes, but not the kind of owl that you decided to put on the list. Um, yeah, I mean, not, not much, not many others. Um, no, not really. 
Uh, okay. We have an Arctic hare, an Arctic fox. That's it. <laughs> they, oh, an Arctic tern, an Arctic woolly bear, an Arctic wolf. Oh. Okay, that's probably enough. <laughs> Arctic, the Arctic grouse. You know what animal I would put in there that I'm just now looking at is the musk ox. Like that okay. big ass ox with a bunch of hair. That looks pretty sweet. Yeah, or a buffalo. It's not a buffalo. It's a musk ox. It's a very different thing. I'm not getting into this whole debate with you about the buffalo. For people who aren't familiar with it, John thinks that he can outrun a buffalo, which a buffalo can run at 40 miles an hour. I doesn't make any sense to anyone why he thinks that he can outrun something. I he, just math. He, I guess he's going to cut compete. me off before I finish this. But it was a it was a bet or, or a, a wannabe bet that I could. At, I, I don't. I think I said I could finish a forty with a ten yard head start, standing no. still before, nope. a, before a buffalo. No, you couldn't. And then part about the head start was something that you just now added in there because you're trying to cover up for it and make no. you're slightly realizing that there's absolutely no chance. I don't think that you could run forty yards. To be honest with you, you're crazy. I don't think that you could. I don't think that you could sprint forty yards right now without hurting yourself. You could go outside, dead sprint, forty yards right now, and not pull a muscle. Yep. I don't. I don't. I or trip or fall down. Yeah. I don't agree with that at all. Dude, no. I'm only in my mid thirties. If any, if any mid thirty person, no matter your condition or shape, can't sprint for eight seconds, then you got other issues. I actually know very few people who are in their mid thirties who do not regularly who don't play professional sports that could run right now dead sprint and not hurt themselves i mean obviously i do a quick warm-up like i would do a stretch so i don't tear a hamstring like i did one time exactly (laughs) (laughs) they you know i don't even need to get it right yeah yeah i don't need i won't get hurt no i won't get hurt but i have been hurt doing the exact same thing in the past i won't get hurt (laughs) 